Just think of what a nuclear explosion would look like up there. The U.S. government once considered it. CNN has documents and interviewed the leader of a once-secret Air Force project innocuously titled A Study of Lunar Research Flights with a just as lowbrow nickname, Project A-119. What was it really? To evaluate the value of putting a, a small, emphasize small in this world anyhow, a nuclear explosion on the moon. Physicist Leonard Reifel, now 85 years old, led the project in 1958. It was the height of the Cold War. America and the Soviet Union were in a nuclear arms race. The Soviets had just launched the world's first satellite, Sputnik, and were ahead in the space race. U.S. officials needed a big splash. People were worried uh, very much by Gagarin and Sputnik and the very great accomplishments of the Soviet Union in those days. And in comparison, the United States feared, was feared to be looking puny. So this was a concept to sort of reassure people that uh, the United States could maintain a mutually assured deterrence and therefore avoid any huge conflagration on Earth. According to Rifle's now declassified report on the project, team leaders also thought they could get information concerning the capability of nuclear weapons for space warfare. Rifle says the plan called for an intercontinental ballistic missile to be launched from an undisclosed location, travel 240,000 miles to the moon, and detonate on impact. Various news reports say they considered using a bomb the same size as the one dropped on Hiroshima. But Rifle now says he wasn't in on those discussions. Could the blast, as some news reports suggest, have actually blown up the moon? Absolutely not. It would have been uh, microscopic, so to speak. It would have left a crater that would have been, I think, essentially invisible from Earth, even with a good telescope. Rifle had some brilliant minds on his team. One of them, an up-and-coming graduate student named Carl Sagan, who went on to become one of the world's most renowned astronomers. We brought him on to look at the propagation of the... Uh, of a hypothetical cloud. Later on, Rifle says, Sagan violated security when he mentioned the still classified project on a job application. Sagan's widow told us she's not sure if he ever did that, but if he did, it wasn't intentional. By 1959, Project A-119 was drawing more concern than excitement and was abandoned. We didn't want to uh, clutter up the natural radioactivities of the moon with additional bits of radioactivity from the Earth. And Rifle says other factors in killing the project were that they were not sure of the reliability of the weapons. The possible deterrent against the Soviet Union wouldn't have been worth the gamble, and there would have been a lot of public backlash in the U.S. Contacted by CNN, the Air Force would not comment on Project A-119, even 54 years later.